we are required to find the force P necessary to start the wheel over this block. Dimensions are given, 5 inches for the height of block, and the wheel has a radius of 10 inches. This wheel carries a load of 1,000 pounds. Hello everyone, again I am Junvert. If this is your first time watching my video, consider subscribing. I will be making videos related to topics hosted at mathalino.com, engineering mechanics, strength of materials, structural analysis, or theory of structures, bunch of math subjects for engineering uh, that range from algebra to calculus, including engineering economy, and I will also cover civil engineering board exam problems in the Philippines. Let's go back to our problem. The block will have a reaction, let us call that R, in the direction that is towards the center of the wheel. And we have a normal force at the floor. Alright. For me, this problem is interesting, especially the second part, where we are required to find the minimum value of force P to start the wheel over the block. Now for the first part. What is the angle here? This is... 5 inches because 10 minus 5 and this radius is 10 inches opposite of this angle hypotenuse of the right triangle meaning this angle here is arc sine of 5 over 10 or that is arc sine of 1 half that is 30 degrees if we sum up forces in the x direction we will have r cosine 30 degrees which is uh, to the right and that is equal to this force p which is to the left Solve for R. In terms of P, this will become P all over cosine of 30 degrees. Okay. For us to have a deeper insight to this problem, let us plot the graph of the reaction R as we increase the value of P. We start with P is equal to 0. Then gradually, we will increase the value of P to 100, 400 until we reach this 2,000 pounds. Alright. So, of course, we can visualize the reaction here by plotting this graph. This is linear in P, meaning we have a graph that is a straight line. Right? But we are more interested about the N, this normal force on the floor. Summation of forces in the vertical direction, zero. Upward, we have this N. Plus, the vertical component of this R. What is this vertical component? That is R sine of 30 degrees is equal to downward. We have this downward, 1,000 pounds. Alright? Transpose this R sine theta to the right side of the equation. We have this will become uh, minus R sine 30 degrees. And then, substitute the value of R from this equation. Uh, this R is equal to P cosine of 30. So we have this P. This will become sine 30 all over cosine 30, which is equal to tangent of 30. This is the value of N. Again, if you observe the R equation, this is also linear in P. It will start when P is 0, of course, the value of N is 1,000. And any value of B that you are going to put in the equation, it will be subtracted from this 1,000. Therefore, we have this downward straight line. Alright? Very clear. Both from our graph and from our equations, this equation and this equation, that when P is 0, we are talking about this line here for the value of P. When P is equal to 0, the value of R is 0 and the value of N is 1,000. Alright? Now, if you are going to apply P is equal to 2,000 pounds, what happened? That is our 2,000 pounds force P. Our value of N decreased to 884, 884 pounds, while the value of R increased to 231 pounds. Okay? We increase again the value of P. And we meet at this intersection point. This intersection point in our graph where R and N are equal is of no significance to us actually. This may look like a special point, but for this particular problem, this point holds no significance. Alright? Let us increase again the value of P. We are now at a point where the value of N is half its initial value which is equal to 1,000. So we have this N equal to 500 pounds. Okay, this line here, we have this 500 pounds. And this happened when the value of P is 866 pounds. And for the value of R, 
we can say that this is equal to 1,000 pounds. Okay, now let us increase the value of B further. The decreasing value of N eventually becomes zero. This portion here of our graph is our utmost interest because this is the very condition wherein the force P will cause this wheel to start over this block. All right? This problem is only interested to this specific condition. What will happen if we increase P a little more? Let us go beyond this red line. What will happen to the system? Actually, the system will no longer in static equilibrium. The wheel now will start to move upward about this block. This region beyond this red line, anong kulay? Region. Okay, we're talking about this region beyond this red line. The wheel is in motion, meaning this wheel is no longer at a state of a static equilibrium. However, the region to the left of this red line, this region here, the system, this whole system is in a static equilibrium. Our moment of interest, however, is exactly at this red line. In this red line, our system is within the static equilibrium, but it is at the verge of motion, and we have a term for that. We call that the impending motion. Okay? Actually, from our graph, we can see the answer for R, and that is equal to 2,000 pounds, this line here. All right? And we can calculate P from this equation. What is the value of P? That is when N is equal to 0. Okay? Now for N is equal to 0, 1,000 divided by tangent of 30. And we have this value of P that is equal to 1,732 pounds. Alright? Of course, this is not our solution. Our solution would be straightforward. We will go directly to the condition of impending motion. And for this situation, N happens to be zero at impending state of motion. Okay? So this is the remaining free body diagram of our system. We don't have the value of N in here. Alright? Let us take the center of this wheel as our origin of our XY plane. So we have this coordinate abscess. Summation of forces in the y direction equal to zero, upward. We have this vertical component of y that is equal to r sine of 30 degrees is equal to downward, 1,000 pounds. We have this value of r and this is our answer for the reaction at impending motion. Summation of forces in the horizontal direction, zero. To the left, which is p, is equal to to the right, which is r cosine of 30 and we have the value of r that is 2000 cosine of 30 this is the value of p required in the problem 1732 pounds the same answer from our graph earlier if you don't want to use a derived value of solving any of the unknowns you can actually construct the force polygon all right so this is the 1000 pounds and we have this force p to the left and we have this uh, value of R, 30 degrees from the horizontal. Uh, in this way, we can avoid using 2,000 pounds in our calculation to solve for the value of P. Because if the 2,000 pounds is wrong, it will follow that P is wrong. But of course, we are confident that this is correct because we have seen this value from our graph. Okay? So, from this figure, what is the value of P? Tangent of 30 degrees is opposite, 1,000, if I may write that one. Tangent of 30 degrees is equal to opposite, 1,000, over the uh, adjacent P. So therefore, P is equal to 1,000 divided by the tangent of 30 degrees. So we have this value of P, the same value here, 1,732 pounds. Alright? I may erase this one. We don't need that. In part 2 of this problem, we are required to find the minimum value of P. Okay? This is more interesting compared to part 1. For us to accomplish this, we need to apply P 
at some angle theta upward from the horizontal. Like this one. In this way, we will not go against this blockage as much as we did in part 1. The idea is to decrease the resistance of this block. Alright? Let us call this angle between this P and the horizontal line theta. Alright? Note that we are still at the state of impending motion. And at this state, the value of P will vary according to the amount of theta. To illustrate what I mean, let us draw the force polygon. This is the 1000 pounds. And this is the line of action of R. If our theta is very steep, we have this very large value of theta, this angle theta. This is our force P in our diagram. And this is the value of R. If we are going to reduce the value of theta, like this one, this is also the value of P in our diagram, and this is the value of R. Decrease again the value of theta. Alright? And we have this P in our diagram. Decrease again the value of theta. We have again this P in our diagram. What we want to find is the minimum value of P that will happen while we are rotating theta, maintaining the state of equilibrium of the system at impending motion. Alright? Let us use this last figure to complete our force polygon. Okay? The angle between this uh, 1,000 pounds and R is actually 60 degrees. That is from the horizontal, R is 30 degrees. Therefore, from the vertical, that is 60 degrees. Alright? So, this is the angle theta. The force P from the horizontal. This blue line and this orange line are 90 degrees to each other. Therefore, the angle here is 90 degrees minus theta. The angle between P and R is 30 degrees plus theta. This angle here is this angle here. Okay? Solve for P. Sign law. P is to the sine of 30 degrees is equal to 1000 is to the sine of 30 degrees plus theta. Therefore, we have this value of P, 1000 times sine of 60 divided by sine of 30 degrees plus theta. Alright? Let us use this equation to see the overall relationship between P and theta. We can do that by plotting this equation into a graph. Okay? This line here is theta. So we have this increasing value of theta from 0 to 100 degrees. Okay? And this is our graph for this equation. You can see when the value of theta is 0, the value of P is equal to this point. Okay? That value of P is 1732 in our previous solution. Right? We are looking for the minimum value of P. From our graph, it shows that it happened at theta is equal to 60 degrees. The question is, what is the value of P in here? Alright? How to find this value? We already know from our graph that it happened at theta is equal to 60 degrees. So we can substitute 60 degrees here. So we have 100 sine 60 divided by sine of 90. And that is our answer. We can also plot the graph of R. By sine law, R is to the sine of 90 degrees minus theta. As 1000 is to the sine of 30 degrees plus theta. Therefore, R is equal to 1000 times sine of 90 degrees minus theta all over sine of 30 degrees plus theta. If you are going to plot that in this graph, this is our reaction R. Alright? When theta is zero, that is a horizontal force, in our part 1, the value of R is 2,000 pounds. Okay? And the value of P is 1732 for the horizontal force. That is from our part 1. But how to solve this value analytically without using this graph? Of course, we are not going to use the graph if we are going to solve this equation. We are here to discuss this problem actually. 
That's why we show this graph to you. And to solve for the value of P analytically, we are going to differentiate this equation in terms of theta. This is the first derivative of this equation. Okay? Actually, we use this formula, the derivative of C over V. And we are not going to discuss this one, why we use this formula, because this is not our focus. Negative C dV all over V squared. This is the formula we use here. And for the minimum value of P, we are going to equate this equation to zero. Alright? Solving for theta, this will become sine, uh, mul multiply this denominator to zero, this will become zero. Cross multiply this negative 1000 sine 60 to the right, this will also become zero. So what will remain is cosine 30 plus theta is equal to zero. Our cosine of that is 90 degrees minus 30 degrees, therefore theta is 60 degrees. So we have this value of theta here. Alright? Of course, our solution is not this one because our focus here is to solve this directly. How to do it? Let us go back to our free body diagram. From this free body diagram, let us draw again the force polygon. We have this 1000 pounds. And this is the line of action of R. And these are the infinite possibilities for P and for R. We are looking for the minimum value of P. When will it happen? It will happen when the line of action of P is perpendicular to the line of action of R. Why it is so? Because it will give us the shortest P in our figure. Alright? And this is the value of R that corresponds to this shortest P. For the shortest P, this is the minimum P. Alright? This angle here is 60 degrees. As we mentioned earlier, because this is 90 degrees here, meaning this angle here is 30 degrees. This is a 30 by 60 triangle. What is this angle? 90 degrees minus 30. This is equal to 60 degrees. And this is the answer for theta. Alright? What is the value of P? P is equal to 1000 sine of 60 degrees from this triangle. We have the minimum value of P, 866 pounds. Let us go back to our graph. This value is 866 pounds. How about for R at 60 degrees? From our graph, it shows that it is 500 pounds. Alright? How about from our figure? R is equal to 1000 cosine of 60 degrees. And that confirms that it is also 500 pounds. Alright? I hope you learned something from this video. Thank you for watching. Have a good day. Bye-bye!